Hi everyone, welcome to July's vegetable garden tour. We are in the heat of the summer and there is a lot to show you, so let's get started. Before we get into our raised beds, I actually have this area to the left of our raised beds that I've actually never shown before because there's usually not too much going on. But now we do have cucumbers growing along this trellis. We have a few different kinds of cucumbers and so far I've only seen two of them start producing. This one here is a Chicago pickling cucumber and the other one that we've had is the miniature white. I don't know if it's because these guys are smaller that they're the ones producing and the other ones are just going to take longer or if maybe those seeds never came up. But we did also plant a silver slicer and a market more cucumber. So we'll see if we get those later on. But so far we do really like the pickling cucumbers as well as the miniature whites. The miniature whites are a little bit more tender and they're sweeter. So if you're looking for a really nice snacking cucumber, this is a really good one. The only downside is that obviously since they're so small, you need a lot if you're going to be doing any kind of preserving. We did use them last year to make pickles and they did hold up really well to the canning process, but you just need to use a ton of them. Okay, so now moving on to our raised beds. In this first one, we have a few pepper plants on the end and they are really producing a lot. These two plants on the right here are a Korean hot pepper and they are just loaded down with peppers. I've picked a few of these green and just um, stick them in stir fries. You only need one per stir fry because they do impart a lot of spicy flavor to the rest of what you're cooking, but we really like that. Some of them are also starting to turn red and we've picked a few of those to dry as well. On the left, we have a shishito pepper and we've just harvested a ton of fruits. We got our first flush from this plant and now it's putting on lots more flowers since we've harvested those peppers and it's going to start producing a second flush of peppers that's going to be even bigger than the first. Next to that, we have a couple of pepper plants that we bought as starts to replace some of the peppers that died in a late frost. Those ones are a little farther behind since we had to plant them a little late, but they are just starting to put on flowers now, and these are more of like a bell pepper sweet variety. And actually this plant in the back does have one pepper that's forming here. And those are looking pretty nice and healthy. We have a really long growing season, so even though these peppers are a little farther behind than if the ones we had started from seed had survived, there's still going to be plenty of time for them to produce peppers. All around those peppers, I've popped in some bush beans. And actually I just noticed that these purple ones have already started producing. I didn't realize that, so I'm gonna have to come out and start picking these. These green ones are probably a dragon tongue bush bean, and those produce a little bit later than the purple ones, but you can see that they're putting on their flowers here now. Oh, actually, I just found one of the dragon tongue bush beans is also starting to produce beans. There's a really nice size one down here. These are really beautiful beans with the purple streaks and the purple makes them really easy to pick as well because they stick out from the foliage. This pepper plant grew back from a stump of the pepper plant that died in the late frost and it didn't do anything for a really long time and I thought it was completely dead, but it actually is putting on fruit now, which is pretty exciting. I kind of just left it here just in case this would happen and I'm really glad that I did. So last month we had a zucchini plant right here, but we've had some really bad vine borers this year and we had to pull that out pretty quickly. We only got like four or five little squash before the vine borers killed it. Then on the end of this bed, we have a mix of kale and pepper plants. This time of year, kale is really hard for us to grow to eat, but I have kept these in here to feed to the chickens. Every day I pick a few leaves for them and they really enjoy eating those. And I make sure to pick the big leaves so that these plants don't shade out these few pepper plants that we have here. These are more starts that we purchased and this is a Hungarian hot wax pepper. Those are starting to put on a ton of fruit you can see up here. At the very end of this bed, we have a few chamomile plants. The trick to having a lot of chamomile is to keep on picking it. 
So whenever I see that these flowers have all their petals open, you just pinch them right off and then you can use this fresh or dried for tea. In the very beginning, if you only have a few plants, it seems silly to pick like four flowers because that's not enough for a cup. But once you pick those flowers, this plant is going to produce so many more. And if you don't pick the flowers, then the plant is going to stop producing and then you're never going to get a big flush. So we actually had picked this plant probably two days ago and you can see there's already lots of fresh flowers on here. So I'm gonna pick those right now. And these smell so good, they smell like green apples. Moving on to the next bed and this is our green bean and eggplant bed. We've been picking lots of green beans on the left end, we had contender green beans, and those are just about finished. They were the first ones to mature, and now they are the first ones to fade out. I've actually already pulled out a few plants just to kind of empty the space and increase airflow because it was really crowded in here, so you can see this big empty space where I pulled plants out today. And for these bush beans, we really have to pick them basically every day or else they're going to get too big. But when I was pulling out those few plants, we had a few overgrown beans. They are enormous. And I'm saving these so that we can save the seeds so that we can plant these again. But look at these things, they are just massive. Our Asian eggplants are doing pretty well. You can see some fruit forming over here and we've already harvested maybe like six or seven eggplants already from our four plants. And I'm hoping that because I pulled out some of those bean plants, these eggplants are going to get more sun and grow a little bit better. Unfortunately, they are starting to get covered in flea beetles. You can see all of them here. I think the plants can withstand it, but they're definitely going to do some damage to this. You can see there's a little bit of like white powdery stuff on these leaves because I had spread diatomaceous earth on top to try and combat the flea beetles. But in my opinion, it doesn't really work that well. I tried it last year as well, and I just feel like it doesn't really do anything. I think the best thing to do really is just to pinch them between my fingers and squish them. It's kind of gross, but I really like eggplant and I want to get some, so I have to kill these. Look at how many are on this leaf. So on this side, we have more of those dragon tongue bush beans. And the beans in this bed were planted earlier than the ones in the other bed, so they're farther along. And even though a lot of these beans are starting to fade, since we succession planted and have new green bean plants in the other bed, we're going to have a steady harvest so that we can eat green beans pretty much all summer long. And we also have a few plants on this side that are a purple bean. Those ones are really beautiful. We've been picking enough beans to probably eat every other day. Unfortunately, we haven't had too much at one time that I can preserve them. I have frozen about two quarts, but note to self, I definitely have to plant more than one bed if I wanna have enough to preserve for future years. So here's the next bed. It's kind of a mix of things right now. On the end, we have a couple of pepper plants. This one here is a poblano pepper. And in this corner, we have a habanero. Last month, we did not have this cattle panel trellis here, so that's a new thing that we've added. Since it's a little new, it's not really covered yet, but soon enough it will be. The first thing we have that we're trellising on here is an indeterminate tomato plant. You can see that it's starting to put out some flowers and fruit here now. This is either like a red cherry or a sungle tomato, I don't remember. And as it grows, I'm just weaving it through the cattle panels so that it can be supported. So this one's gonna go over, and then the next branch is gonna go under, and then over again. And I'm just gonna keep weaving it like that. We have another tomato plant here, and I'm gonna do the same thing with that. I'm not sure what variety this is. We also planted in this corner some cucumbers. This is a silver slicer cucumber, and those are just getting started because we only planted those a few weeks ago, but hopefully these will be climbing up the trail soon and covering it. Then we have some beets. We have been harvesting a good number of baby beets and we're trying to let them get a little bit bigger. We're a little bit impatient, especially with root vegetables. We tend to pick them a little early and just have them as little baby vegetables. So maybe like about this size, but they've been really delicious. And last month I talked about how our golden beets don't do anything and kind of just sit there, but 
this one is actually forming a beet, which is pretty exciting. This will probably be our first ever golden beet. But you can see there's a bunch of other ones that still look really puny. They look like they've barely grown from last month. On the very end, we have a watermelon plant that we're just going to let vine off off the edge of the bed and into the pathway. At the base of the other trellis, we have a bunch of climbing pole beans. These are a rattlesnake pole bean, and those are just starting to get big enough that they are climbing, and soon they'll grab onto the trellis. On the other side, we have some tomatillo plants, and I don't think that these will grow as tall as tomatoes, but I'm kind of doing the same thing where I'm just weaving them in throughout the cattle panels just so that they have a little bit more support because these plants can get pretty loaded down with fruit. We have some more cucumbers here and also I think this is a winter squash. Then we have a few pepper plants. These are the ones I had to restart when our first ones died, and this is an Ejvarsky pepper, which was our favorite sweet pepper from last year. And they're doing pretty well and starting to put off flowers, which is great. At the end of this bed, we have our peanuts, which are doing really great. They've grown a lot since last month, and if you look closely at the base, they are starting to form their cute little yellow flowers, which is really exciting. Peanuts are so fun to watch grow. You can see how full and lush this little area is getting with the peanuts growing. I just have a cilantro plant here that I've let go to seed and it's starting to form its little seed pods. So hopefully I can harvest these to replant or to use as coriander. In the middle of our pathway we have this one pot here. I had some jalapeno peppers that I restarted and I didn't have a spot for them at the time so I just sucked them in this pot here and they're doing really well. I just have a bamboo stake in here. Um, hopefully that'll be enough to support them. Last year they did get a little bit big but this will have to do. I just needed a place to stick them since we didn't have any empty space in our beds. In these middle two beds we have our blueberry bushes surrounded by strawberries. The blueberries are starting to ripen and we're getting a few every day. The birds like to come here and try and snack on them. And I covered these with the organza bags. These are so great just to cover anything you need to protect from birds or animals, rabbits. Yeah, not a ton, but we just transplanted these here this spring. So hopefully they will just keep on getting bigger every year. On the other side of this garden, we have another cattle panel trellis. And this one was installed a few weeks earlier than the other one, so it already has some stuff growing along it. We have this dahlia plant on the edge here that is so beautiful. And then we also have a ton of sweet potatoes that are growing so amazingly. These are sweet potatoes from slips that we started by ourselves and I have a video if you want to learn how to do that. But they are starting to vine out into the pathway which is exactly what I want and they are doing really well in this spot. Behind the sweet potatoes we have some sunflowers. These are cutting sunflowers and we have had a deer come around here and eat some of the leaves so you can see that I've covered the heads of these sunflowers with organza bags just to protect them. These are pro cut sunflowers which are specialty cutting sunflowers that you have to pay a lot for the seed so I will be really annoyed if the deer come and eat the heads off like they have done in our flower garden. So I just wanted to protect these as well as possible. In the corner we have another watermelon plant that is just trailing out into the pathway and it's starting to put off some flowers actually and I noticed today it has this little baby watermelon female flower. So cute. So growing up the trellis we have some Asian long beans. On this side of the trellis we have the green ones and they are doing really really well. They have grown all the way up this trellis in the last month and have reached the top already. On the other side we have the red variety and those have only gotten about maybe five, four or five feet high. I usually find that red varieties of things don't do as well as green varieties for some reason. I don't know if that makes a difference or if it's just coincidence. And this bed is mainly for our onions that we grew from seed. And I am pretty impressed with how they are doing. They are starting to bulb up now and they're looking really nice. 
Like this is already a great size and it looks like it's still growing. The stalk is nice and healthy and these bottom leaves have not started dying yet. So I think that this still has a bit to grow before it's ready to be harvested. I think in this bed, we were able to fit at least 50 onions, which is pretty incredible. And some of them are a little bit smaller, but that's totally okay. There's definitely some nice, good-sized ones, which I'm pretty happy about. On this side, we had our leeks, which we have harvested all of already. They were so delicious. And in their place, I popped in a couple more tomato plants. So this one that was next to the trellis, I thought I would use that spot so that I could support this tomato plant as it grows. And then this one here is a determinate tomato. So I just have the one stake for it and hopefully that will be enough support for it. The next bed is probably one of my favorite beds. It is full of determinate tomatoes and also has these marigolds on the four corners that are Aaron's favorite. They are looking so beautiful and bushy. This is a really exciting time because our tomatoes are just getting ready to be picked. This will probably be the first one of these determinate tomatoes that will be ready to pick probably in two days. I'd say, one or two days. And look at this beautiful line of four red tomatoes in a row. What a good sight. These plants have gotten so loaded down that they are just leaning over. I should have known better and staked them better, but you can see how they're just completely leaning over now because they are covered in fruit. I mean, in this shot alone, there's like a dozen tomatoes in there. This is going to be our main canning tomato probably. I'm hoping to get a good amount of canned tomatoes this year because that's something that we use a lot of. I also have some random onions that I threw in here when the tomatoes were small, which probably I shouldn't have done because the tomatoes get so big and bushy, but actually these onions have done amazing. Like this one's a little small because it's been shaded out by stuff that's been on that side of the bed but this one is huge even though it was growing right in between tomato plants so maybe they just don't need as much space or light as you would think on the edge here we have a couple of ground cherry plants these have been really fun to have in the beginning we did have some damage from potato bug larva but it seems like most of those are gone now, so these are doing pretty well. And we come out here every day to look for ground cherries that have fallen. They're such a good little garden snack. They kind of taste like a pineapple flavored tomatillo. And they're really good. In the next bed, we have another ground cherry plant. I think this one here is only one plant, but it has completely spread out and gotten huge just because it had the space and the nutrients, I guess. And not only is it growing huge outside the bed, but one branch of it has actually gone all the way under this A-frame trellis as well and taken up a ton of space. I'm pretty sure it's already reached to the other side of the trellis. Maybe I could go on the other side and show you. On this A-frame trellis, we have four cucamelon plants. I was just about to say that I'm pretty fed up with these plants because we give them so much space with this A-frame trellis and they so far haven't produced anything. But I just noticed this tiny little cucamelon. And I'm not really sure when you should pick them. I know that they don't get very big. So maybe this is the size. I'm gonna pick it and try it now. Mmm, <laughs> that didn't taste that good. Maybe it needs to go a little longer. I don't know, tastes kind of weird. Anyway, moving on. Underneath the trellis last month, we had a bunch of carrots and lettuce. The lettuce we pulled out and fed to the chickens. And we pulled out the carrots last week, but unfortunately we didn't really get anything. I think it was a combination of our soil being too high in nitrogen. And also we had some damage from these little like maggoty things. It might be carrot rust fly. I looked it up and I think that's what it was. We do have a few beets under there still that we're going to need to harvest soon. I don't know if they're going to get much bigger because they're shaded out. They're just kind of a nice baby beet size to eat. And here, let me see if I can sneak in here. You can see this is that ground cherry plant and it's gone all the way through to this side of this trellis. And this trellis, I think, is four feet wide. So this thing is a monster. We have a couple more tomato plants here. 
Here we have a little bit of an empty space. This is where we had our four celery plants and those have all been harvested and eaten. In their place, we did sow some red mustard. It might be a little early for this, it might be too hot, and we're also not even really a big fan of this, but we planted this for the chickens because I think they will enjoy it. Figured we might as well use the space since we didn't have anything else to plant here yet. This big bushy plant is lemongrass and it is looking so beautiful. I love that it makes me feel like I am in the tropics even though I am not. And I think sometime this week or next week, I should actually come and chop off a bunch of these tops and dry it for tea. Then at the end of this bed, we have five or six calendula plants. And I have been harvesting so many calendula flowers from these. You can see that it looks like all their heads have been chopped off because I just come out here like every two or three days and I pick. Last month, you probably saw I picked like three or four flowers. And now if I come out every other day, I can pick probably 20 or 30 flowers and not even make a dent because the next day it's gonna rebloom and come back with so many more flowers and it just looks like I haven't taken anything from it. These are so nice to have, especially towards the front of our garden where we can see them from our back window because they're so bright and cheery. And I'm hoping to dry a ton of calendula flowers this year because I have a lot of products that I wanna make with them and sell at our Etsy store. I am planning on making some calendula salve, maybe some infused calendula oil soap and lotion bars. So yeah, I have a ton of plans for all of these flowers that I'm drying. So our two larger trellises on the right side of the garden are here. First of all, we have a Japanese beetle trap here. I don't know if you guys deal with Japanese beetles, but they are little devils. They are terrible and we have caught probably thousands maybe like tens or hundreds of thousands i don't even know they are just insane here actually our apple tree is right behind here and i'll just show you what they have been doing to this poor tree just look at these leaves that are completely gone from the japanese beetles they're really really bad this time of year but anyway moving on we'll try not to think about that last month we had two delicata squash on this trellis they didn't get very far before the vine borers got to them. We had to pick them young and we kind of just ate them like zucchini, so they weren't any good for curing or storing or anything like that. So that's a little disappointing. I think next year what we'll have to do is either try planting them later to avoid the vine borer season or cover them when they're young so that the borer moths can't lay their eggs at the base of the plants. But anyway, for this year, since we pulled them out, I wanted to use this precious trellising space, so I popped in some indeterminate tomatoes here. I believe I have sun gold tomatoes here and like snacking varieties because this is closest to our house, so I wanted for us to be able to come out here and snack on some stuff. And it does look like this is like a small cherry variety. So hopefully those will fill up this space soon enough so that I don't have to think about our sad squash year. In this space in between these two chalices, we have like our little pollinator heaven here. I kind of talked about this in a recent video where I talked about our favorite flowers for pollinators. So we just have a bunch of things that they love like echinacea, borage, and sunflowers here. And there's always just a ton of bees here. This little guy is sleeping on this sunflower. And these sunflowers are so beautiful. They are evening sun sunflowers. This one's probably my favorite here. On this other trellis, we have some Asian gourds. I think these are just called fuzzy melons, and here I will show you why. Look at how fuzzy and cute that melon is. It is so soft. These are the first two fruits that I've seen. I'm not sure if they will actually get pollinated because I don't think we've had any male flowers yet. This little cluster looks like it's gonna have some male flowers, so these guys might fall off, but they're pretty cute to see. I love growing Asian gourds. They do so well in our hot southern-like climate where it gets really hot and humid. And the best thing is that the squash bugs and vine borers do not touch it. I think maybe because they're technically a gourd and not a squash. But last year we didn't have any problems with them, and this year too. And we had a really, really bad squash vine borer year. And these guys just look completely fine. And I don't really water these buds either, and these plants do just fine in drought-like conditions. 
Back in our in-ground garden, here is our first bed, and you can see that our corn has started to tassel, which is really exciting. We didn't have great germination this year, so I've been making sure to go up to the corn and just shake the tassel so that the pollen can fall down to these ears of corn down here. Each of these silks leads to a corn kernel, and if it doesn't get pollinated, then that kernel is not going to form. So I wanna make sure that those get pollinated really nicely. This stalk here has actually two ears of corn on it. So hopefully we get something out of them this year. This is our first time growing sweet corn because last year we tried growing like a popcorn drying variety, which I don't know if I'd recommend. I think sweet corn is probably more worth the time and effort. Also in this bed, in this bare area where we didn't have corn come up, we have a watermelon plant. And that one is just starting to put off little baby flowers and melons as well. The next bed behind the corn is a cover crop area. We have cow peas here and also some clover. The cow peas are actually starting to put out their beans and we can actually eat these. And if I let them get to the right size, I probably will harvest these and we can eat them as black eyed peas if you take the beans out. You can also just harvest them like this and eat them like a green bean. So we have a few of those growing. You can see that this one got nibbled on by that deer I was talking about. It seems like it's coming back okay. I have started spraying around our garden with liquid fence just because definitely don't want this deer to make it a habit to come eat in our garden when we work so hard to grow all of this food. The next bed here is our in-ground peanut bed. They look kind of sad right now, but I think it's just because it's evening and they like to close up their leaves like they're going to bed. So usually during the daytime, they're open like that. Yeah, these guys are doing okay. These ones were also nibbled on by the deer. You can see a little bit of damage here where some leaves were chomped off, but they're coming back okay. This peanut bed is covered in weeds, by the way. I am doing a terrible job of taking care of this. In the other end of this bed, we have more sweet potatoes. This is our comparison sweet potato bed, and you can see that it's definitely not doing as well as the raised beds. And this is probably a combination of the soil and also just because I don't really water back here. They're surviving, and we might get a few potatoes per plant, but I'm assuming they're just not going to do as well as the ones that we have in the raised bed from how it looks so far. Since they weren't doing super well and since sweet potatoes vine across the ground, I did pop in some more sweet corn seeds back here. So you can see they're starting to come up now. This is our, this is like our second succession of corn. So obviously I just showed you the first one that is well along its way. So this is going to be the second one. And here are some more seedlings here. This next bed is mostly empty. We do have one squash plant here. We had another one that had to get pulled out because of the borders again. But this one looks like it's hanging on. It did look like we had some damage early on in the season, but I tried to get any little worms in there that I could see. And then I just hilled up the soil around the stem so that it could hopefully reroot. It does look like it's surviving, so we'll see if we get anything. It's starting to put off some flowers now. It's kind of weird how some years you just have a really good year with stuff and the next year it's terrible. Last year we grew winter squash. We got like 75 butternut squash off of three plants. It was insane. And this year, not a single one. The rest of the bed I am pretty sure is empty. I can't remember if I seeded anything in here, but it's been so dry that it probably wouldn't grow anyway. We did have onions in there last month and we've already harvested all of those and either used them up or they are curing in the greenhouse. For the next bed, we have this cattle panel trellis and we have a few things growing up along it. First, we have more rattlesnake pole beans. These ones got chewed on by the deer. Then we have more of our Asian vegetables. This one here is bitter melon. The leaves are really pretty and it's a really pretty climbing plant. We don't really love to eat bitter melon actually, but I am growing it for my parents so that I can give them lots of the melons. And what's great about bitter melon is that it's so bitter that a lot of animals and bugs won't eat it. It's like the deer did not touch this at all, even though it was eating everything else around it. At the very end, we have a silk squash plant. This is also known as loofah gourd, and the flowers have just opened up. They are so beautiful. 
this is such a pretty plant too if you wanted something that is great to grow on an arch trellis this is definitely it later on in the season the entire plant will be covered in these bright yellow flowers especially in the evening they kind of glow in the moonlight and they are really beautiful Another really productive plant where the bugs don't bother it, we don't have any problem with squash bugs or anything like that on these plants. Back in this last row, this is all of our okra. And this has been a little bit of a struggle because that deer that I mentioned has come and nibbled on a lot of these okra as they were growing. You can see this one was totally just chopped off. It looks like it might be starting to grow back, but I did sow some new seed once that happened. So this one is another old one, but this one here is a new seedling. So that one's looking a lot better. There are some larger ones that somehow survived, and I really don't understand why this deer is eating everything that it's not really supposed to like. I've read that they are not supposed to like okra because the leaves are a little bit like fuzzy and prickly, but this deer just doesn't care. In order to protect the new seeds that I sowed. I put up these hoops and I've been covering it with frost fabric. This frost fabric is the best stuff to prevent pest problems. This is also what I used to cover our eggplants earlier in the season to protect them from the flea beetles and that has worked really well. So just until these little tiny seedlings get big enough and pricklier and hopefully the deer won't eat them, I'm going to be keeping them covered. Since we're back here, I just wanted to show you a little update on our chickens. They are about two months old now and they're doing really well and loving their little outdoor area. Just pick some weeds for them. Look how cute they are. This one here is one of our favorites. He or she is always really friendly and always comes up to us and jumps on our legs. Aaron was just picking some Japanese beetles. They love our apple trees and our grapes. And this is just a small amount. We just killed like hundreds of them, but he's gonna feed these to the chickens. So here we have our asparagus bed. We are still getting just a couple of spears a day. Production is starting to die down just a little bit. The Japanese beetles also like the asparagus. They will pretty much eat anything, it seems like. The next row is our tomato row. It has really grown a lot since last month. And we are starting to harvest a good number of cherry tomatoes. Here is a sun gold. This is probably one of our favorites from this year. They have such a nice, almost like a citrusy tomato flavor. They're really good. Here we have a speckled Roman, which is kind of like a plum paste tomato, but it is really pretty. It's kind of stripy, and I think it's going to be like orange and yellow. I'm not sure what this one is. It might be a brandywine. And actually, I think that one's ready to harvest, so I'm gonna pick that one. That's a pretty nice sized tomato. The bottom is really nice. Oh, here's one of the speckled Romans, a little farther along. Oh, that one's ready. It completely just fell off. That one's really pretty too. Wow, this is our first one of this variety. Then we have like a red cherry tomato. Just a really classic tomato flavor. These ones are great to have. This one here might be a Paul Robeson. We grew these last year and they have such a nice complex flavor. They're a little bit more of like an orangey green tomato. So this one's almost ready to pick. More sun gold. Then we have some tomatoes that we purchased from Starts because we had some tomatoes die in that frost so we wanted to get a head start. I think these are a big beef and they have a lot of fruit on them. Really big clusters. The way I've been staking these up is we have tea posts every maybe five feet or so and then I just go in with some jute twine and I basically corral the plants. For the most part, it's working pretty well. It does keep them upright, unless they get super long, like this one. This one's growing faster than all the other ones, so it's always just trailing a little bit. And the only other issue I'm having is that when they get really heavy, they tend to lean over. So this one's supposed to be all the way here, and I always have to just bring it over and try to get it to stay that way. 
The idea was to do a little bit more of like a Florida weave system, but we didn't quite get that right just because this area was a little bit of a mess because we had such a mix of tomatoes because we had a bunch of them die and then it was just really disorganized. Hopefully next year, we're gonna plant later. Everything's gonna be really organized and we'll get the trellising system down a little bit better. But I'm okay if it, even if it looks a little messy because you still get a lot of production from a messy garden. I mean, just this one area that was all leaning over until I fixed it still has a ton of tomatoes on it. This is the last row and this was our potato row. A lot of it has gone now. So this whole section here we have harvested. In the front here we had red Norland potatoes. Really good production on those. Then we had Kennebec here, which is more of a russet potato, and we started harvesting those. We have a couple more plants. You can tell they're pretty much ready to harvest because all of the foliage has died. And I think I'm actually gonna do a video soon of harvesting the rest of these potatoes, just so you can see what kind of yield you can get from a space about this size. We have a few other types of potatoes here. The tags are buried, so I don't know what they are. These probably should have been picked a little bit. Let me see what's under here. Oh, got some potatoes to pick. The foliage just completely disintegrated when I pulled it, so we should probably come out here and pull these after this video. There's definitely potatoes under there. Yeah, this foliage looks pretty bad. Oh, in the back here I can see one tag. This is Onita Gold. So that looks like it's pretty much the biggest section that we have left to harvest. So that's going to be it for today's garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video.